The question we want to answer is which of these three seed starting methods are going to get these tomatoes to germinate the fastest. As we get ready to head outdoors for our spring growing season, there are quite a few seeds that we need to get started inside ahead of time. The ones that we aren't going to just direct sow outdoors. And there are a variety of ways that we're starting our seeds. In fact, I'm going to walk you through three of those methods now, two of which we've been using for quite some time and one that's brand new to us. So it's the one we have the least experience with, but it's also the one that we might just be the most excited about. So I'm going to talk you through the pros and cons of each of these, and then I'm going to show you how that last method works. Now, the first method of seed starting is typically used in order to figure out your germination rate for your seeds. And for those of you that don't know what that means, it's very simple. It just means the percentage of seeds that you can expect to develop into plants once you plant them in the ground. And it's a very simple way to get your seeds started. In fact, we talked about this in an earlier video where we were talking about the shelf life of seeds. And in that video, we showed you how to start this using a damp paper towel and a little Ziploc baggie. And all you need to do is pick a specific number of seeds. In the case of the video, we picked 10 seeds. We put them inside the paper towel, laid them inside the baggie and kept them in a nice warm spot. And after a short period of a couple of days, you should start to see your seeds breaking open and those plants coming to life. And then you can count the percentage of the seeds that are going to germinate as an average for all the seeds of that variety that you plan to plant. This is a green globe artichoke. And you can see here that every single one of these, some more so than others, but every single one of these five seeds is beginning to open up and germinate. So we have in these five, a 100% germination rate. Now, do we expect 100% germination? Not necessarily. But one of the pros to this type of seed starting is that you can see right away which of your seeds is going to develop rather than having it down into some soil or soilless potting mix that's going to give you a little bit longer perhaps to see what's happening down there. Now, one of the challenges to this method, and I guess we could call it a con if we wanted to, is that these will have to be transplanted into some sort of mix, likely one of our other styles of seed starting, though we will then know that it's going to continue to grow. And then that will have to be transplanted again for a second time when it's ready to go outdoors. So you have multiple times where you have to mess with the growing environment of these seeds. So while you do get to see the percentage and you know right away which ones are going to germinate and which ones are going to get started for you, there is a little bit more movement to this style of seed starting. The second method of seed starting that we have used probably longer than any other is to sow directly into some of these seed trays, whatever style, shape, size that you may have. Now, one of the positives to starting your seeds this way is that they're easy to move around, easy to water, and just in general, this method is one that is typically, I guess, tried and true for a lot of people. This is a really common way to get your seeds started. These trays are typically around $1 to $2 a piece, depending on the type you get. And then, of course, you need another tray underneath to catch the water if you're trying to start these indoors. It is a common way to do it. And in fact, we typically use something like a pen or really anything, your finger to poke a hole in here, plant a seed, and you can control depth really easily. But there are some negatives to this style, especially if you're someone who doesn't like the idea of using a lot of plastic. Well, this method adds to that plastic waste for sure. You have to use multiple layers of plastic with this method. And if you're like us and you're starting a whole bunch of seeds, that does add up over time. So not only are we talking the waste, we're also talking the cost of each of these trays, which again, even if it's just a couple of dollars, that does add up in the long run. Now, one of the biggest challenges, and I guarantee if you've been gardening for any period of time, you've experienced that if you've worked with these, is that these can be a pain to get out. So when it's time to pull the plant out, if the soil is too damp, if the soil is too loose, if the roots aren't developed well enough, you could be pulling a plant out and you could leave the soil behind. You could end up crushing this as you're trying to get the plant pulled out. All in all, it can be a real pain. And then this wouldn't be reusable. So unless things work out perfectly, you may find that these don't even last that long. So you may have to replace them year over year. 
Another challenge with this method is if you delay transplanting this outdoors too long, you will find these get incredibly root bound. In fact, I'm fairly confident if you've ever bought seedlings to transplant from a nursery, when you pull them out of their container like this, you have found the roots wrapped and wrapped and wrapped in circles. Because they don't have contact with the air, they don't have access to what we would call air pruning. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a few minutes. But that is important to remember. So then you have to loosen up the roots, which means you're creating some damage to the roots as you come in and separate them out you're damaging them. I mean, even though it's probably necessary to get them to grow out so they don't just stay in that clump, it's not ideal and it's certainly not the healthiest for the plant. So it's important if you are growing seedlings in this style that you don't wait too long to put them in the ground or else you're gonna have a rooting issue. Two, now the third method, which is the one that again is brand new to us this season, is the one that I happen to be most excited about, and that is the soil block method of seed starting. If you have never tried this method, it's really quite simple, and it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. We created our own soilless potting mix. It's a one-to-one -one ratio of peat moss to vermiculite, and then we added some of our worm castings, all of this sieved so that we could have a really nice, fine mix. The worm castings are from our vermiculture setup, and on top of that, we added some azomite and some blood meal. Now, what you'll find is that there are a ton of soil block mix recipes. You can add, subtract, you can change out, you can replace ingredients. Some people use perlite instead of vermiculite. Really, that part is to taste. Well, hopefully to your plant's taste. But we added that all together. We started mixing it around and then we had to make sure that we got the right consistency, which meant adding water. Now these blocks are very simply created using one of these soil cubes. Now I'm gonna show you how that works right now. Now making a C block with our mix is really simple. First thing, we have a nice little soil area here, a little tabletop soil tray. So I'm gonna add my mix into the tray and then I have to add my water. And again, you can figure out how much water you need, whatever works for you. Remember, if you're using the peat moss, the peat moss takes a bit to absorb the water. So there'll be some mixing involved. But once we have it down to that texture, it should look something like this. And you can see just how much water I have added here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mound this soilless mix up. And the reason we're gonna mound it is because, well, I don't have a lot of the mix and we need to create a space where we can take our soil block creator and we're going to press it just right down into the mix now it's possible if this isn't all that deep that we may have to add a second go around and just push it in there to make sure we have enough of this mix in each of the squares otherwise you might end up with a short square now as we move it back and forth i'm doing that so that i can create a nice level surface on the bottom and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to tuck my fingers right underneath here while holding down with the palm, I'm gonna pull up on this. This is the spring-loaded piece. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up in order to release the cubes underneath. And what we have are four beautiful blocks. So these are our seed blocks that we're gonna be able to plant in. They're nice and sturdy. And you can see from the other ones, once they start to dry out a little bit, they harden up even a little bit more. And these are going to be perfect to grow in. Now, when it comes to pros and cons, I'm going to start with the cons for this method because there are two that I can think of that you might run into. The first one is you have to get used to creating a mix that's going to separate from this device easily and that's going to stay together. But once you figure out that water to soilless mix ratio, you're going to pick up speed. So really that con doesn't last all that long. And the second one is that these blocks can dry out, so it's important to remember that you do need to keep the soil moist, and the best way to do that is to water down into the container, not into the block itself, and allow them to soak the water up. And if you do that consistently as needed, you're not gonna have any problem there. Now, when it comes to pros for this method, where do I begin? The first thing is, it's a block of soil. That means that there is no plastic waste that I have to deal with other than perhaps whatever container you use to sit these in. And it certainly does not have to be a plastic container. And so this has limited waste. 
There is no removal, messing up with the roots or anything like that issue when it comes time to transplant. And when you transplant, it just goes directly into the ground. That's it. That is as simple a way to transplant as I can imagine. And on top of that, you know, I talked about how in this method, in the method where we're using these seed trays, that we could have that kind of root ball that just goes in there and really creates a problem for you. Well, we don't have that issue with these. And the reason we don't have that issue with these soil blocks is because of something called air pruning. And it's really quite interesting. In fact, I've been researching this and studying this, and I love this concept. As the roots start to develop from these seedlings, they start to creep out to the edges. But because they don't have access to that really high, humid air, they burn off. And so rather than coming out and creating this massive root ball that we have to deal with and separate, it will instead force the plant to create roots, other roots, internally healthy roots, so that we have an amazing, healthier root system than one that's not subject to that open air. And I think that might be one of the greatest benefits to this system. So my expectation is that the plants that we transplant from here outside might even be the healthiest plants that we transplant all year. What do you think? Well, now we've talked through these three different styles. And at the beginning of this video, I said, which one of these is gonna get us results the fastest. Which one of these are we gonna see the germination the fastest? And now, the way to figure that out is to plant something. We're going to be planting these organic 42-day tomatoes that we got from jungseed.com. Now, I'm not going to use all of the seeds in here. There aren't that many, there are only 20 seeds in here. So I'm going to do three seeds in each of these methods, just three, and we're going to compare those three. We're gonna see if there's any difference in health of the plants. We're gonna see if there's any difference in the time frame of the plants, like that initial germination. There's just lots to learn as we head into these three different types of experiments. And the cool thing is the mix that we're going to use for the soilless mix here, it's all the same. So we have that similarity there. So that helps us when we talk about the controls in this test. And once we put these into our Ziploc bagging method and they start to germinate, we're going to transplant them into, again, the exact same soilless mix once we're there. So we should be able to tell a lot in this experiment over the next couple months. So join me as I plant. All right, let's go ahead and get these planted three different ways. These are our organic 42-day tomatoes, again, from Junk Seeds. And you'll notice right here it says these are determinate. So that means one thing, they're not going to get as big as our indeterminate varieties. They'll stop growing after a while. That's kind of a nice thing if you're looking for something that's a little bit smaller in terms of space. And we're also looking at 42 days for these tomatoes, which is not long at all for tomatoes. Now, one of the rules of thumb, in case you didn't know, for seed starting depth is the smaller the seed, typically the more shallow you can start it. And so I've got three seeds here and I'm going to put them in between my damp paper towels, just like we talked about in our seed germination test. That's exactly what we're gonna do here. So we've got one, two, three. Now remember, if we were doing an actual seed germination test, we would in all likelihood do at least 10 of these seeds we're just adding the layer down just like this so it's got moisture on both sides and it's going back inside our plastic baggie and it's going to be sealed and of course i will label it with the variety and today's date all right now that that one's done let's move on to our second method right into a seating tray now we used the tip of a marker or a pen just to create a little indentation here and we're looking at about a quarter of an inch for these tomatoes that's all we need for depth so i'm going to add my three tomato seeds here i'm just going to drop one in each of these holes and then we're going to add a little bit of our mix on top lightly to cover it up And there we go. Now onto our third method, these little soil blocks. And the same thing, we have one, two, three, three of our soil blocks. And again, I'll do the same thing. I've got some of my mix over here. 
I'm just going to add it to the top to cover it up gently. And we have three seeds planted in each of these methods. So we have a grand total of nine of these tomato seeds planted that we're going to be able to track quite easily. And there we have it folks, three easy methods for seed starting, lots of potential here, and we're excited to see which one works out best for us. If you have tried these three methods, we would love to know which ones work best for you. If you have any experience with any of these, let us know, leave us a comment. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.